lift up some different requests before heaven. Amen. Pray for the upcoming conference in Prescott. Let's pray for Pastor Greg and Lisa Nickel. The Morales says, let's pray for the Galvans, the Hearts, the Cassios. Amen. We're also going to pray for Paul and Lenny Campo, Chip and Lori Guineer in Cape Cod. Let's pray for Dave and Vinita Suspansky and Wayne and Leisha King in Jacksonville. Amen. Let's also lift up my pastor, Pastor Keith and Kerry Sullivan, his wife. Bless their congregation. Amen. Touching lives tonight, impacting them for eternity. Let's pray for a good turnout in East Rochester. Amen. And believe God for your requests also. We have some uh, local requests here for Greece. We're going to lift up Ryan, amen, from Walmart. Elizabeth is under the weather. Masood Shabibi and uh, Marcus, who's now living in uh, Florida, took a job there. Amen. We're going to pray for Tyler uh, to bring him to church. And Marvin and his family, amen, from the beach. Amen. Gave us some wonderful poems. Let's lift up. Susan's family for some conversions, amen, and baptisms in the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. Uh, from the beach, we also met uh, C.K., Lumar, and Adida. We're going to pray for Joseph Kelly, amen, and Eddie and Donna. Perhaps you have a need in your life that I did not mention. You need God to move uh, supernaturally. It's beyond you. It's beyond your strengths, and I'm going to ask you to lift your hand, and that's just a token sign. Amen. God sees your hand, brother, and God's going to help uh, you as you lift in your hands. Amen. Before heaven, if you're online, we want to pray with you for miracles. We want to believe God for all that you can accomplish in God, uh, healing miracles. We're going to ask you to pray. L put your hand on your body. If it's your head, you're having mind assaults, put them on your uh, forehead like this and pray with us tonight. And we're going to believe God for miracles. Brother Barry, can you open us up in prayer? When we subside, amen. Lord, you're an awesome God. You do wonderful things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's pray, church. Let's call on heaven. God, you can do it, Lord. God, send down fire. God, give us breakthrough. God, baptize us. In the Holy Ghost, God, I pray, give us a, a Holy Ghost a ambition, God, a drive to serve you and serve other people, God. I pray, anoint this servant tonight, Lord, God. Give us faith, God, that moves mountains, God. I pray for the upcoming conference, God. Blessing and anointing and power release, God. Souls being saved, converted, filled with your Holy Spirit, God. Power to change this world in which we live, God. We pray for anointing and churches planted, Lord God. Visit us tonight in power. Lord, thank you for being here with us tonight. Thank you for this beautiful world that you've given to us that we can forge forward and spread your word and help other people see the beauty of this land. We also like to pray for the family down in Phelps that had the quadruplets. We want them to survive and give this family many years of happiness. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's pray to God together. Amen. Thank you. And uh, we want to greet you if this is your first time in our church or if you're online, this is your first time. Welcome. And let's take a minute to greet one another. Make everybody feel welcome.
Take the shortcut. Amen. Thank you. I uh, want to greet everybody, make, make everybody feel welcome. And uh, we have a few announcements, things that are coming up. We have uh, church again on this Sunday, adult Sunday schools at 10 o'clock. Amen. And uh, our uh, study has been on Joshua looking at his character traits. Amen. Maybe it's possible that we could be like him a little bit. Amen. We're also going to remind you about church on Sunday morning at 1030. And uh, we're going to have a regular service. Amen. Hopefully it's not regular. Hey, hopefully you show up, right? <laughs> and uh, the Holy Spirit is here. And uh, amen. We're going to see visitors. Let's believe God for breakthrough. And also we have a midweek service, as you know, because you're here right now. But, <laughs> but for those online who are thinking about coming next week, we'll be uh, there at 7.30. 6.30 is our prayer time. We want to get a hold of God. Amen. We want to also remind you about upcoming events. That is, uh, this Monday we're going to be fasting. If you can join us in a fast, we are going to be fasting for a world evangelism uh, for the conference that's coming up in July, July 11th through the 15th. And so if you'd like to be with us, if you can fast, that, that'd be great. We're going to be praying also uh, on Monday evening at 7 and Tuesday at 7. If you can make it for that, we'll be here for a good solid hour calling on heaven. And because we're going nowhere without prayer and without God to move in our behalf. Amen. We want to be doing what God is doing. So let's go ahead and uh, also uh, look at this other thing here. This is something that my son is doing. If you know anybody who's younger, actually, I'm not invited to this event because it's for young people. And it's going to be at the East Rochester Church, amen. It's the underground theater, but he's having an emo night. So does anybody know what that means? No. No. Okay. There's a whole genre of music that he is going to be performing, that there's thousands of kids here in Rochester that will be attending this event, hopefully. And we're going to pray that there's anointing and power on it so that people can get saved, amen, through the power of the Holy Spirit and through an anointed altar call. If you want to watch the uh, Harvest Bible Conference sermons, they're going to be uh, live streamed. If you want to connect to that, you can watch while it's happening or you can watch it at your leisure or whatever time is good for you. Let's change the order of the service if I don't have any other announcements. Now we're going to take our offering. And uh, this is from 2 Timothy. This is called Keep It Until That Day. And he writes in chapter 1, Paul, his pastor, is writing to Timothy, the new pastor, the younger pastor. In verse 12, he says, For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. You know God keeps good books. God is really smart. Did you know that? Yes. It's not like he misses anything. It right. slips under the wire when you got saved. or You know, when you put stuff in the basket, God remembers. God sees your faithfulness. Amen. And he's kind of, he's storing it up in heaven like there's this giant vault. Amen. It's like a, you're dropping this in the bank. Amen. Because nothing that you give and nothing that you do, amen, will ever be forgotten. Because God keeps good books. He'll keep it. He'll keep those offerings, those tithes. And as you sacrifice to God, he takes it and he anoints that money that you put in the offering. Amen. Let's bless God and give to God tonight and be uh, liberal givers. Amen. David, can you come forward and take the offering? Amen. God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. David, can you bless the offering? We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to do. And we thank yes. you for the blessings that you attach to Ooh, us. Yeah. You attach blessings to all parts of our lives, and we're grateful for that, Lord. We thank you for what you've done in our lives. We ask to take this, blessing, this offering and bless it for your purposes, Lord, so that we can get more people saved, so we can bring in the last of the harvest. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God bless you guys. Thank you for your faithfulness. Amen.
You want to sing some more? <laughs> Praise God. It's great to see everybody. Thank you for coming. Amen. And look with me in your Bibles to Mark 2. We're going to read one verse here, verse 18 about timing. Then we're going to skip through until verse 22 if you want to read along with me. The inspiration of this sermon came last week, maybe two weeks ago. I was chainsawing with my son. And we had to cut down some trees and some tree limbs. The blade had gotten dull from extensive use, only producing a lot of smoke and uh, uh, heating up, and also taking a lot of pressure as your, your blade is getting duller and duller by the minute, and you push harder and harder. Amen. There's no time to get it sharpened because you're on a deadline. So I picked up a brand new chain for the chainsaw that was already sharpened. So excited to get back to work. I put the new chain on, tested it with zero results. After inspecting the situation, I realized that I put the chain on backwards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't know you could do that. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's like, ah, you idiot. <laughs> you didn't know that? I mean, everybody knows that. I'm not the only one. <laughs> you did it too. So, after, so uh, this is the first time it ever happened to me. It's a big surprise. Until I removed the chain, put it on the right direction. I was just wasting a lot of time and energy. And it was getting dangerous. And there was a lot of smoke yeah. everywhere. Amen. This never happened before. How much wasted time does every Christian make without progress in their lives and having an effectiveness in their life because their faith is dull? It's not doing anything. Their life, the chain of their life is put on backwards. Man, when I put that on the right way, it, it just <laughs> right through like butter. Not a problem. And the, the chips were flying everywhere. It was really exciting. Um, you might not get a rush out of that, but I do. It's a lot of fun. Let's look at the condition of every man's heart in here and find what scripture applies to helping us get things adjusted properly so that you and I can become fruitful in our life and our Christian experience and have greater impact in life. Amen. Before we get to our scripture, I need to bring your attention to the history of the chainsaw. And now, just if you've got a weak stomach, we have a bathroom over here. Before the cesarean sections, if a baby was too large to pass through the birth canal, parts of the pelvis could be removed. At first, the procedure was performed by a small knife, which was very messy and painful. In 1780, two doctors invented the chainsaw to make the removal both easier and less time consuming. Do I got you now? Uh, hey. Wait till you see the picture of it. No. <laughs> the original chainsaw was powered by a hand crank. If you can imagine this, I hope those blades were sharp. You're probably already clenching your knees together after reading the title of this whole thing. But yes, the chainsaw was originally invented to assist in childbirth. Before the common use of the cesarean section, all babies had to be passed through the birth canal, which makes sense. But we know babies can be obstructed in there if they're breached, if they're too loud. When babies can't fit through, they could get stuck in the pelvis. Parts of the bone and cartridge had to be removed to make more space for the baby. This is called the symphiosomony. And that is the history of the chainsaw. Yay. Let's read our scripture. Yeah. Mark 2, verse 18. Thanks. The disciples of John and the Pharisees were fasting. Then they came to Jesus and said to him, Why did the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast. And Jesus said to them, 
Can the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. Then, in that day, they <coughs> will fast. No one sews a piece of unshrunken cloth on an old garment, or else the new piece pulls away from the old and the tear is made worse. And no one puts old, uh, excuse me, puts wine into old wineskins or else the new wine bursts, the wineskins. And the wine is spilled and the wineskins are ruined. But new wine must be put into new wineskins. I want to preach tonight about fasting because we're going to be going into a time, a portion of our serving God where we're giving an opportunity to fast together. If you've never fasted, this could be your first fast. Fasting brings an effective faith into fruitfulness. As Christians, we don't fast every day, thank God for that. But we fast when there's something needful. Amen. We're finding ourselves ineffective. We're finding our lives barren. We're without any progress in our relationship with God. We have no joy. We have no impact. There's min minimal fruitfulness in our lives. And this is what is so wonderful about fasting. You may have some of these telltale signs, I'm not sure. Maybe you have no desire to witness anymore. You, you say within your heart, everybody I tell, you'll come to church, come to Jesus. There's no fruit there. Nobody's showing up. There's no effectiveness to my life. Amen. Is it possible that your chain is gone a bit dull? I've entitled this Chainsaw Faith. And we're going to deal with the whole idea of fasting. How many love Jesus? Hallelujah. Isn't God good to us? And then you want breakthrough in your life. He wants breakthrough. He wants to help you. He wants to give you greater effectiveness. And we're going to look at this scripture. We're going to look firstly, though, at our need. And that is overall to be effective in our lives. We need to be successful at what God has called us to do. Amen. And what he has called you to do. If your life is like a dull chain on a chainsaw, or if it's backwards even, you're getting nowhere. You're not going to be making any converts. You're not going to be making any sense. You're not going to have any joy in your life. Amen. You're going to be lacking. Amen. A dull chain is ineffective when cutting lumber and other raw materials. If our chain of our lives connected to our faith is dull. It will be ineffective. We need, amen, to have our chain kept sharpened. Then most definitely we can become lumberjack Christians. Amen. Cutting down trees, cutting down demons, cutting down things that are in our way. Through simple obedience in living for God, we find that over time, we can become dull spiritually. And we need some outside influence upon us to help us to sharpen our vision and make our faith produce more fruit. Is this microphone on? Am I in the right building? Yep. I like so. Praise God. Because many times, amen, through living life, we just get dull. Our faith is lacking. We're missing something. And we have a direction from heaven here that we can become fruitful. And we can have a success, personal success in your life. Amen. There's a great need for you to be effective personally in all your relationships. Maybe there's tension in your marriage. Well, you, you need to sharpen 
that faith, you need to sharpen something so it's not so dull. Maybe you're having a problem with your finances. Maybe you have a problem with certain people in your life. Then maybe it's your friendships. You're picking the wrong people to be friends with. Having the right attitude is essential for relationships to not only work effectively, but also to become successful and even beyond success. Amen. Just expecting people, amen, just getting along with them is not really enough, amen. There has to be a harmony. Uh, being at odds with people in your life is going to keep you from being fruitful. So this is going to help you. If these things are coming against you, if it's worth doing, then it's worth doing well, one man said. Have you heard that before? Yeah. I want to add to that. If it's worth doing well, then let it become hyster historical or memorable or deeply. In fact, let's change uh, the culture in which we live. Let's turn Greece upside down. Let's change the climate of our families. And let's believe God for incredible revival. Amen. That has been promised us in a tremendous way. I mean, mind-boggling how people will come to Christ and... Uh, they will also get a revival like you're getting a revival. Let it, an incredible blessing flow through your life from heaven. No holding back to the fullest, God. Do everything you want to do in my life. This is the greatest need that you have right now. If, uh, amen, your destiny is neglected, Maybe you should start paying a little bit better attention to it. Amen. Lord, let my life make a difference. Not just hiding out or, or you know, avoiding my destiny, but actually going towards it. As David uh, heard about Goliath. And it says that he, he, the armor didn't work for Saul, so he was familiar with killing a bear or killing a, a, a lion that was attacking the sheep. He grabbed five stones and he ran towards his destiny. He ran towards fighting that Goliath. Yep. He wasn't cowering, he wasn't hiding. He was like, yeah, bring it on. Right in the forehead of that giant. <laughs> Oh, wow. oh, another Smash that it's going to be a good service, guys. <laughs> Smash that demon. Dead. Praise God. Oh, I'm glad I came to church tonight. Hallelujah. <laughs> Had to be here. Praise God. That's what we want. Amen. Moving towards it. Not holding back. And so... We have to pray. We have to get a hold of what God wants to do with our life. This is very needful for you and I. Maybe, just maybe, if you fasted, that edge would come back on your life. Maybe it has gone dull. Maybe when you first got saved, you were like, yeah, let's go to church. Yeah, let's pray. Yeah, I love reading my Bible. And then time kicks in. And pretty much everything gets dull. Your spiritual sense, your spiritual appetite gets dull and ineffective. Why even bother? Right? This is how we feel sometimes. I'm just being honest with you. But if we will beg God, God, use my life. And if you and I will get serious about our faith, Miracles will occur. Can you say amen? amen? Your family's going to get saved. Your backslidden children, your parents, your uh, grandparents, if they're still alive. Amen. And people on your job and people in your neighborhood will get saved. Your health will be whole. 
Amen. You don't have to be limping around. You don't have to suffer anymore. The pain can go and your spirit will be made holy. Amen. Some of you, maybe you don't have ministry. You don't understand ministry, but some of you do understand ministry. If you do have ministry, you want God to anoint it with power so you can become an effective tool in the hands of the master. Let anointing come upon my speaking. This is my prayer because my job is to bring the word of God to you. Let my sermons help people that they can get the breakthrough, that they can get the encouragement, that they can have help and uh, be encouraged. So let my ministry here, what me and my wife are doing, my family, and this church is, let it, let it help people. Let it provide miracles for people here in Greece. Let there be an edge upon it, a sharpened edge. Make a, this ministry like a sharp threshing instrument, something that can really do some damage. Let my gifts be shared with everyone else in my life. This should be your prayer. Some of you have gifts that nobody else has. You can share them with the church. You can give yourself to those things. Let the church be edified with Whatever, whatever I have to offer. Maybe it's being an usher. Maybe it's praying. Maybe doing the overhead, uh, the words. Uh, by the way, I forgot to thank her for the job that she did. Yeah, give it up, everybody. You know how do that. Or music. We have many instruments up here. And, uh, or maybe prophesy. There's another gift that the church gives to some. You know, you might have this gift and it's a ministry. If you do not have ministry, then you can begin to pray and say, God, I want ministry. I want to do something for God. I want my life to help this local church here. This local, this is an address. Your faith has an address. 1578. Right? This is your town. This is where you live. You have relationships. You reach many people. And here, man, God wants to use your life too. Is it possible? God, give me an eternal perspective. Lord, why did you save me in the first place? That's a very good question. Mm. And if you could never figure that one out, then ask him, what do you want me to do from this point? God is faithful to get us on track and help us with supernatural power because you have been separated uh, for yourself for ministry, for usefulness, perhaps. God will take notice of your prayers. He will use you as an instrument for revival. Let's secondly look at the dull chain, lacking real power in your life. Matthew 17, verse 19, the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why could we not cast this demon out, the little boy? So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there. And it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind goes out except by prayer and fasting. So you know the story. A father brought his son. My son is, you know, severely perplexed. He jumps in the fire. He falls in the river. And he's trying to kill himself, basically. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cast out the spirit. So this man is beside himself, and Jesus addresses it, and he casts the spirit out. The disciples fell because they chose to lean on a formula or a way of doing something. Or maybe they, uh, were, maybe they didn't wait long enough. I don't really know exactly. But many of us are lacking real power. Some have a form of godliness, right? This is the religious person 
who knows the Bible, who knows all the scriptures, right? They know all the language, the Christianese, praise the Lord, you know, uh, you know, God bless you, you know. But they have no power in their lives. They're good people, but they lack revelation. It says they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. Having merely a form, you know, anybody could put a tie on, I guess, and a suit. You have a form where you look like a religious person, but that religiosity yields nothing. And there's no lasting fruit on the person who is just merely religious, like in word. I mean, there's no power there. No power to do miracles, no power to change themselves, no power to change other people, no grace for other people. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. 2 Timothy 3, 1, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Men will be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having, verse 5, a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. The dull chainsaw, the dull chainsaw chain is very dangerous. If it's not working properly, you're going to be putting a lot of pressure on it or you're going to be reaching and it's not going to be cutting quickly like you expected it. More energy is needed to, you know, this is the kind of person who's, you know, doing, doing it on their own, doing it on their own strengths. They're trying to live for God by their own power, by their own ways, their own uh, energies. Their blade is dull. They're not really doing any serious work. Some people have no grace for others. That's when the chain is too tight mm -hmm. on the bar. And it won't rotate freely like it wants to do. Some Christians are so wound up. They're wound up tighter than a, a drum. They have no grace for other people. Everything has to be rigid. Everything has to be tight. There's no room for uh, any fun or any loose ends, everything is rigid and religious. I mean, the chain needs to loosen up a little bit, okay? There's a, a, a little bit amount of, ch you know, the chain is supposed to drop about a quarter, an eighth of an inch, let's say, so that it is loose, so that it's not going it to get bound up on the bar. It can do much work if it moves freely. The chain also needs a lubricant. There's a chain oil, and the chain oil needs to be lubricating that chain continually. If it doesn't, the, the cutting is harder. It's much harder. And then there's a channel that goes through there that sucks the oil into the bar so that it can be more effective, so that it doesn't heat up so much. Amen. Sometimes you're going to have to... Uh, you're going to have to free the, the cloth. If it gets clogged, you're going to have to free it up if you want the lubricant to come in. And that's why having church is a good idea, man, because we can have God help us to unclog our hearts when they get clogged up so that we can have that flow. We can have the oil come into our lives and we can become more effective. That's what's great about reading your Bible and praying. Hallelujah. Praise God, I had all that. That's good. Your relationships are going to really be helped as you have the Holy Spirit inside of you flowing into your relationships. You're going to be successful at that. Amen. Think about Matthew 7, verse 5. Jesus is teaching. He says, you hypocrite. First take out the plank from your own eyes like a two by four. And then you can see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. A little introspection is very helpful for you and I before we start judging other people. This is like the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost inside of you will help you with your relationships. Amen. Before you judge other people, make sure your own heart is right. Amen.
A little introspection through prayer and fasting will reveal a lot about yourself. And that's why we're going to be praying next Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. We're going to ask God to reveal things to us so that we can become better Christians. We can become more effective. We can have uh, those little teeth on the chain of the chainsaw. Each one of those needs to be sharpened. That has to happen often. Amen. And fifthly, we need the oil of the Holy Ghost. The oil of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Having the Holy Spirit inside of us helps us to work better with all our relationships. It makes church a lot more fun, I'll be honest with you. It makes living for God a lot more enjoyable, and it makes people more lovable. Can you say amen? amen. That was for free, all of that. And I mean that. You know what I'm saying? Praise God. Having the Holy Spirit helps us to work better, smoother, longer lasting, and even safer, and less kickback. That blade on the chainsaw is very dangerous. Amen. There can be you know, a lot of accidents attached to that. Getting along together with other people. Romans 12, verse 18. Listen to this one. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Okay, some people, you can't do anything with them. You can give them a million bucks and they still hate your guts. Uh -huh. Get out of my way. Honk, honk. Right? <laughs> people are going to try to walk all over you. There's some people that are like that, but depending on you, and your decisions. Live peaceably with all men. Praise God. All things were common in the book of Acts. Think about that church. How they got along. They were praying for each other. And they were living together. I mean, I'm not going to uh, suggest that this become a commune or anything like that. Like a bunch of hippies. Don't get nervous. <laughs> but they shared everything. You need some food. You need some of sugar, you need some you know, yeast, whatever. Oh, you need some clothes. We got some robes over here. We're going to take care of your place to stay. They were like tight, man. They got along with each other. Amen. Holy Spirit ministry. Sometimes your chain needs to be sharpened. First, of course, like me, idiot, duh. Make sure the chain is heading in the right direction. We could probably say that that is the non-Christian or the person who's never been saved before. It's, it's just on backwards. You're not going anywhere, man. You're not doing nothing for God. Maybe you think you have things backwards. I've met many talented people in the past 35 years. Zero anointing. They have all kinds of giftings. They can talk. Some of these people, they, they're very attractive. They can be beautiful. Other people can talk to a crowd and you know, they get into the party. You know, these people, uh, they just show up and they're hilarious and they can entertain you. And some people have those uh, kinds of, um, you know, those talents and those giftings, but zero anointing. They're not going anywhere with God, right? That's not where it's at. Amen. But they're heading in the wrong direction. Either they're not saved or maybe they're a Christian without direction, vision, and anointing. Amen. <coughs> People need to be headed in the right direction. Amen. And they need to learn about fasting because fasting can really help them. Amen. Some people fast and they don't pray. This is foolishness. Just fasting like on a diet. That might help your body out, but your spirit is growing. Your spirit is like hungering in a way for spiritual matters, for spiritual dominion, and you're completely missing it. But fasting accompanied with prayer produces many things, many great things. Fasting with prayer brings a, a valid proof in your heart of what God is doing and what God has promised you. He'll remind you there's miraculous results that are attached to fasting. It's going to give you a personal dominion. Now you're kind of just like a, a ping pong ball. You're bouncing all over the place. But when you have 
the Holy Spirit giving you direction, amen, you're going to be headed, amen, straight in the will of God. You're going to have a personal dominion. If some of you are lacking dominion, that means you have no fortitude or spiritual strength. And this will help you to get dominion in your life. It will give you success too. You don't have to go three days. We're not asking you to go 40 days like Jesus and Moses, right? You could start with one day. Wake up the next day, have breakfast. Break your fast. Or, you know, you could just enter it at whatever level you're at. But it's pretty obvious that our chains need to be sharpened from time to time. Amen. God will bring anointing to your spirit, man. Anointing. Think about the oil that flows through that chain. Amen. That anointing will come through your life. Joy and friendships and relationships. Enjoy your marriage. Enjoy being saved. It shouldn't be a bummer, man. It shouldn't be a drag. We got all these rules as Christians. No, it's not that at all. Amen. Amen. God will give you timeless convictions as you're, pra as you're praying, God, what is important in my life? What do you really want me to do? Do you think this is important? He's going to begin to show you things that you never saw before if you're willing to fast. He'll show you what you need to believe is important. He is going to show you where you need to spend your money. How much time will you spend at church? What friends will you allow to influence your life? Let's talk about chainsaw faith tonight in closing. Let's talk about having an effective life. A sharpened chainsaw. Man, you can really do a lot of work in an hour. Sure. When you have a chain on your chainsaw that is sharpened, and it's in the right direction, your life will become more effective. There'll be more anointing to your life. You'll be able to do more business in the spiritual realm with less effort. Some of you, you know, can be spinning like you're, like you're a rat or a hamster on that wheel, spinning. I'm praying, I'm reading my Bible. I'm going to church, right? I've been a good boy. I haven't been done doing nothing naughty. I've been drinking and smoking and cussing and fornicating, right? And you're on that wheel, that religious wheel, but you're really not going nowhere. God brings anointing to our lives when we have our chains sharpened, giving you an effective ministry. It's likely that Paul adapted his messages to his location when writer shares but the content of his preaching never changed for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified 1 Corinthians 2 verse 2 effective ministry is built on supernatural power of the gospel and our preaching he writes should not become bogged down in personal opinion or theological minutia that's a great word of all the things we must do, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ clearly is our primary task. This sounds pretty simple and basic, and it is. You and I need Jesus. 1 Peter 4.11 If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God gives. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. When a church fails to see God, this is a quote, they will eventually lose effectiveness and die. There's plenty of churches that close up. There's plenty of ministries that just dry up and just blow off in the wind. There's many churches that they're probably good people, but there's no conversions there. There's no miracles that are happening. There's no faithful saints. And there's no outward focus. In other words, outreaching 
uh, or witnessing and evangelism. All those things are part of a cold and dead church. We need to have a, an effective, fervent prayer. When we pray, our prayers should be effective. And I mean, praying specifically for things, praying for the quadruplets, you know, that's important, right? Specific things, pray for our prayers to be effective, that something good can be produced through them, not just, I want a new suit or something, right? I want a new guitar, right? Not just me, but effective working so that Jesus will be glorified in people's lives. Miracles. There's people thinking about divorce today. In Greece, there may be people you know, and you have the answer. Your prayers can help them, or people that are addicted to substances, fentanyl's coming across the border. It's probably getting cheaper and cheaper. Drugs and immorality. Then we can pray and pray effectively and specifically that those things, those demons that are taking over people's lives will be eradicated and they will be powerless. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. That's from James 5, 16. Lastly, think about Jesus as he was fasting. Before he started his ministry, he uh, was led, right after his baptism, you'll see he was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to fast. And Jesus is there for 40 days. I imagine he got hungry a little bit. The devil comes and tempts him three times. He quotes the scripture. And then he comes back. He returned to Galilee in the power of the spirit. And news about him spread throughout the whole countryside. That's Luke 4, 14. We need power in our lives to be effective. Amen. If you want to be a good Christian, amen. You know, that's fine. You can pray and come to church and you know, read your Bible and so on. But if you want to be effective, that means above and beyond, you know, the nominal Christian. Prayer and fasting is going to help you. It's going to really reveal who you are as a Christian. And that's why some of you are probably scared of it. Because it shows us how really weak we are on our own. Amen. Let's close our eyes and bow our heads. And I'm going to just ask you, I know one's looking around, it's somebody else's business, but if you think that maybe it's possible for you, you'd like to fast uh, this upcoming week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand as a sign to me. Amen. God sees your hands. Praise God. You could do three days, you think? Is it possible? What about two days? Could you do two days? If it's possible, amen, God could help you to get that breakthrough you're looking for. You want power. You want to, to be an effective tool for God. Man, maybe you can't do three days or two days. Maybe you could fast one day. Amen. Is there anybody here you could fast one day with us? Amen. With an uplifted hand, anybody like to do that with us? Amen. Praise God. God sees your hands. Amen. Thank you. Amen. This man writes, I made an interesting discovery recently. Fasting has been the bread and butter of normal church life for 2,000 years. In fact, according to my research, it is one of the major factors in releasing the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Could it be that fasting is as vital for us today in the 21st century? Maybe it's the missing ingredient to revival. Matthew Henry said, Fasting is a laudable practice, and we have reason to lament that it is generally neglected among Christians. And if we want a book of Acts revival, church, we need to fast and get a hold of God. So I'm going to give you an opportunity now. If you're not saved, you're not living for God, amen, I'd like to give an altar call very quickly. Or maybe you're backslidden. You've once tasted of the heavenly gifts and you have uh, turned your back on God. You have gone out back into your old life. That may be you. 
It might be you tonight that you are not right with Jesus. And that's who you want to pray tonight and get right with God. And then we have an opportunity here in church. The Holy Spirit is with us and you're in good company with good friends that care about you. If you'd like to pray, you've never been born again or you're, uh, you're backslidden tonight. You're not right. You're not doing God's will. Amen. With an uplifted hand. Is it possible that you online are listening and you would like to pray tonight and devote your life to Jesus? Give him your heart. Change your mind. That's you tonight. And I'll be willing, I'll be glad to pray a sinner's prayer with you if you would close your eyes and say, Jesus, I'm asking you to become Lord of my life. I thank you for dying on the cross. I thank you for the blood that you shed. Give me power over my demons. And I ask you right now to set me free from my past. Make me whiter than snow. I repent in Jesus' name. And I thank you for this prayer. Amen. Let's go ahead and uh, we're going to open up our altars this evening. And uh, if you'd like to come forward and pray, we're going to sing a song here. And it's not too late to pray for salvation or backsliding if you'd like. Amen. I will wait on you, Lord, till you come.
If you have any questions about fasting, we can talk about it. I have a few books on fasting. If you'd like to read or study it, amen. Let's go and have a great week. And Brother David, can you bless us as we leave today? Yeah. Thank you, Lord, that when we go out, we do go out in the power of your spirit. Yes. You're living within us. Yes. Show us how to be more aware of that and more able to allow you to move through us, Lord. Because we know if you move through us, great things will happen. Yes. So we ask, Lord, to give us the grace to turn to you in all things.